Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Nicole here. Today I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating a simple but professional website for your photo booth business. The first thing you're gonna need to do is choose a domain name. This is basically your website's address, like mine is onthemomentbooth.com, maybe yours is capturethememories.com. You want your name to be memorable, easy to spell, and related to your business. So you gotta kind of put yourself in your customer's position. Are they gonna be able to easily remember it? Are they gonna be able to easily spell it? Are they gonna be able to easily type it out? Think of all of those things when you're picking out your domain name. I used GoDaddy to purchase and manage my domains, but there's a lot of other ways that you can do that. This is just the one that I went with and this is just my experience. I am not a professional website builder by any means. I'm just sharing with you some of the basic tips so it's not so overwhelming for you. All you have to do is go to GoDaddy's website, type in your business name or the domain name or the website address that you wanna use, see if it's available first. If it's not, maybe try slight variations like adding booth at the end or rentals or services to your business name. Once you find one that's available, then you can go ahead and purchase it. One thing that I wanna mention here that I see happening a lot is people choosing names that are very, very similar or direct copies of another business's name that's maybe even local to you. I've seen this happen time and time again. People spend the money to invest in a website, invest in a business that has the name already taken. So if you haven't gone through that process already of checking if your name is available, isn't trademarked, isn't protected, any of that stuff, go and Google your website name, see if it pops up anywhere, and then go and check for a trademark. The number one thing you don't wanna do is take a name or choose a name or use a name that is already trademarked because that's just not good. It would also really, really suck if you invest all of this time in building up a website, building up a brand, building up a company that already exists and you've just wasted all the time. You have to start from scratch. So take the time. Don't rush through this process. Take the time to really, really research and make sure your name is available. It's not copying anyone that's close to you. It's not going to be a conflict of interest. Um, I've seen that too, where it's similar and then customers then get confused on which company they're going with because the names are so similar. So avoid that hassle entirely. Take some time to really, really research, come up with a unique name. I know it can be tricky, I know it can be tough, but it is so worth it to really invest that energy and time into creating a name that is unique to you. All right, now we're going to register our domain. So. After choosing your domain, you'll need to register it. So registering is simply the process of reserving that web address for your use. Once you buy it through GoDaddy or another provider, it becomes yours for a certain period, typically about a year, and then you'll need to renew it each year to keep it. All right, now that you've got your domain, you need to set up your DNS or domain name system. This might sound complicated, but it's just a system that points your domain to the actual website you're building. The great thing about using GoDaddy's website builder, which is what I did, is it will happen automatically once you start building your site. You don't have to worry about taking that extra step. But if you decide to host your website on another platform like Wix or Squarespace or PageCloud, you'll need to update the DNS settings in GoDaddy so that it directs to your new host. It's an easy process and GoDaddy actually has guides that can walk you through it step by step so you don't have to stress too much about it. All right, so once your domain is set up, you're ready to build your website. Now, I personally use GoDaddy's website builder because it's easy, quick, and it works well for beginners. They have a lot of free templates that you can use. All you have to do is then plug and play, and so really great. That's what I needed when I started. I need something quick and easy, and so that's what I went with. Um, it doesn't have a ton of advanced features like other platforms like Squarespace. You can really build it out. It is a huge machine, but GoDaddy is perfect if you're just starting out and need to get your website up fast. Um, again, I'm not a professional, so don't take it as professional web designer feedback, but whatever you choose, choose something that you can easily learn or are willing to invest time to learn. 
In GoDaddy, you can choose a pre-designed template and customize it with your logo, brand colors, and event photos. I know you can do that in Squarespace as well. You probably can do it in most websites. Most websites should have some sort of template that you can access. In the next step, I'm gonna share with you those essential things that you should have on your website to get started. Okay, so here are the main pages you'll need for a photo booth business website. Obviously on the home page, this is your first impression. It's like meeting someone for the first time. You want to be professional, clear, concise, and really convey what your brand means. So use a clear headline right at the top of that page that explains what you do, something like, your tagline, like capture every moment, or uh, keep the memories forever, or we have the best custom photos, whatever you want to say, or whatever your tagline is, put that at that header. Um, and then also have a call to action button right there on that first fold, that first section of your website that says book now. Um, make sure to include some really great visuals. If you have video, use that here. Uh, anything to really grab people's attention and keep them there on your page. Another thing that I really would love to see on your website and what I love to include on my website was your story and about you section, how you started your business, what makes you different, why you're passionate about what you do. Um, it just builds that authentic connection between you and your client and bridges that gap. And I love seeing about me sections on website. I think it really helps connect you to that person and that service. And then obviously you're gonna want your services and packages on your website. So outline your different photo booth services, your pricing if you want to. Um, and then I definitely recommend offering three packages, a basic package, a mid-tier, and then a premium package. And this works really, really well for giving your clients options. Not too many. We don't wanna scare them away. We don't wanna give them too many choices. Uh, decision fatigue is a very real thing and giving people too many choices to choose from can get overwhelming and then they'll leave and that's the last thing you want to do. I think that's one thing that I see people um, make the biggest mistake in, in their website is they give too many options and it's kind of the great thing about photo booth business is there are so many ways that you can make yourself unique and different but definitely try your very, very best to hone in on those three basic things that you can offer your clients that your clients are gonna love and wanna come back to you for. Your basic package is going to offer just a very bare bones thing. So maybe that's a drop offs, maybe that's just a digital photo booth, and, and that's just all the basics that you can offer, bare bones, most affordable, things like that. Your middle package is where you want all your clients to go. So this is gonna be your favorite photo booth experience that you offer your clients. So this is gonna be maybe prints, uh, maybe three hours, uh, depending on what kind of service you wanna provide your clients. This is gonna be the package that you want everyone to choose. And then you're gonna have your top tier package. And this is gonna be all the bells and whistles. So maybe you have a flower wall, maybe you include that there. Maybe you have an audio guest book, or maybe you have a video guest book. Maybe you have glam. This is going to be the package that is like, woo, this is like a very luxury expensive client. You want them to pick that package. Now, as far as pricing and putting your pricing on your website, that is completely up to you. Many people do. Um, what I just challenge you to do is think through your client's experience. Um, how do you like to go to a website and get pricing? Do you like to see how much stuff's gonna cost right off the bat before you make a decision to even click like contact? Not every client is going to be you. You are not every client, so keep that in mind. But do think through your the buying experience and how you want your clients to, to feel when they come across your page. Do you want them to be um, given all of the information they need right then and there, do you, do you customize stuff? If you do customize packages, then obviously you're not gonna want um, all of your pricing on your website, but maybe you have a starting at price. That's a great way to start if you don't really know what you wanna do and you kinda wanna test the waters a little bit, maybe do a starting at price. And so it gives people a clear understanding of like, oh, okay, these are way beyond my expectations for a photo booth or, oh wow, this is actually way more affordable than I thought. So, um, or this is just right, you know? So think through all of that whenever you're putting pricing on your website. As a buyer myself, I prefer to see pricing right on the page. However, 
for my corporate clients, I can't necessarily offer my pricing on my page because it varies. I could offer a wrap photo booth for my corporate clients. I could offer um, a different kind of experience. So there's a lot of variables that go into my corporate clients. So I prefer to give them a custom quote for their experience and what their goals are for their event. For weddings, it's pretty cut and dry. You've got your three hour reception time for service, maybe four, maybe idle hours are added in. But for that experience, I really like to keep my pricing really transparent on my website so that they have a clear idea of if it's gonna be an affordable thing for them. Um, granted, not everyone looks, not everyone reads, not everyone sees the website. So be prepared to also get people, If you, even if you have pricing on your website, just be prepared to answer pricing questions because that's what people do. Another essential thing you're gonna need on your website is obviously a contact page. Make it easy for clients to get in touch with you and a simple contact form that you can embed from your CRM is really, really easy to integrate within your website no matter what website you choose. Um, I use HoneyBook and so I have my HoneyBook contact form right on my page, embedded on my page. You can have it as a link, so you can link it to a button. Um, it's really super simple and don't make it too complicated. You want your clients to be able to reach you really, really easily and simply a couple clicks away, maybe one click away. We don't want them to go too long without having a way to contact you. So make sure that you've got several buttons all over your page that lead to your contact form so you can get them from interested to booked fast. Another thing you wanna keep in mind whenever you're building your website is optimizing it for performance. So before you hit publish, make sure your website is optimized for speed. So keep in mind, large images can slow down your site, which makes people frustrated. Like, how do you like it if you, if the wheel is spinning on your web page, right? And you're refreshing and nothing's loading, that sucks and will definitely hurt your SEO. You can use free tools um, online to compress images if you need to, to get them within the size. And obviously check those and make sure they're not too pixelated or too reduced because you definitely don't want that on your website either. All right, so finally, let's cover quickly some SEO. So what is SEO? SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. You don't have to be an expert, but you can do a few simple things to help your site rank higher on Google. And again, I'm not an SEO expert, very minimal understanding, but I just wanna share you with the basics so that you don't get overwhelmed and it doesn't stop you from at least trying and moving forward. So I would say incorporating terms like photo booth rental or wedding photo booth or event photo booth into your page titles and content. That would be embedding SEO into your website. Um, you could also do this in meta description. So write a short keyword rich description for each page so, so, so it shows up correctly in search results. You can add alt text for images. So add a description to all of your images so search engines know what's in them. And in another video, I'll share with you some of those like weekly maintenance tips for your website that you can do to keep it fresh. That's it. You know how to build a basic website for your photo booth business. So from choosing a domain to setting up your pages, we've covered it all today. So if you found this helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with a friend. And the number one thing I want you to leave with today is motivation to get started, motivation to try. The worst thing you can do is not take that step forward. So don't let a website stop you from starting your business and stop you from launching your future. Take action today, get started on that website, spend a couple hours a day, and come back for the next video where I'm gonna be talking through some of those maintenance tips, things that you can do on your website. I'm so excited to see how you guys implement and start your websites and build your websites and make it your own. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.